Shout aloud, Hallelujah! A loud Hallelujah! If you find yourself in today's power must change and service, you did not come here by chance. You came here by divine appointment. And if you are in this service today, know that we are here to fight a battle. So everything you are going to do here this morning, for the short period we got here, do it from your heart. Do it with everything that is in you. If you are asked to pray, pray it with all the strength in you. By the time you now begin to pray, what took so many years for others to achieve, the Lord will fast track it for you. I have some words of prophecy for some people here upon which they will certainly testify. There are some people here today, the Lord said I should tell you that that long standing yoke is broken forever. Thank you, Jesus. I have a word for another person. I don't know who these people are, but the Lord said, the curses under which you have been laboring, and it will appear as if it will never let you go, that by the time we close today's service, curses will have been cancelled completely. Thank you, Jesus. I have another word for somebody here. The Lord said, the windows of opportunities, listen to me carefully, the windows of opportunities, that the enemy has been systematically closing the gates for the past 10 years. By the time we shout the loud hallelujah at this meeting, all those windows shall open of their own accord. I have a strange word for somebody here. Strange word for somebody here. The Lord said, I should tell you that within the next few weeks, you shall overtake your enemies and your problems. <laughs> and your testimonies shall embarrass your enemies. <laughs> Something's already happened to somebody over there. The pronouncement of the doctors about your life, which according to the textbook is true has been overruled by the power of God now. As many people as are plugging themselves into the socket of this prophecy, even if the prophecy is not meant for you originally, but as you plug yourself into the socket of the prophecy, whether you are watching us online or on the satellite, your miracle shall manifest in the name of Jesus. There is someone here. Another strange word from the Lord. The Lord said, He would disgrace the witchcraft blockages and they shall bury themselves. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. Out of ten persons here, you are going through a process now. The Lord said you should not worry, that it will accelerate you into a new place. Thank you, Jesus. And you, that person over there, hear this word from heaven. You shall bury the enemy assigned to terminate your life. Silence now. 
stretch your right hand towards this altar. Father, these hands that are stretched here, your word says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Father, the hands that are stretched forward now, soak those hands in the blood of Jesus. Father, these hands that are stretched here, soak these hands in the fire of the God of Elijah. Any problem that these hands touches, let them become history. In the name of Jesus, let the handwriting of the enemy expire. In the name of Jesus, Now, if you are in this meeting and you are single and the enemy is threatening you that you will not marry, there seems to be a mark of rejection upon you. No one is coming, wrong people are coming. That hand that we have prayed on now, begin to use it to rub your forehead as if you are wiping something away. It may be hot, don't worry. Just continue. Something is happening over there. That's the first person. Number two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wipe off the mark of the enemy. Wipe off the mark of rejection. Wipe it, wipe it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you know you are in this meeting, it appears as if all roads are blocked. It's as if the enemy is closing good roads against you. It's as if the enemy is attacking you with the arrow of bad luck. Your head is the symbol of your destiny. I'm going to count 21. You smite the center of that head with your hand. And then the blockage will be shattered to pieces. Are you ready? Are you ready now? One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Get yourself ready. This is the last seven. Do it aggressively. Don't feel sorry for that head. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Thank you, Jesus. Uh Aha. Look at what's happening now. Yes, that fell over there. You have been seeking for contracts. After that, it has been smitten by your hand. It is now the contracts that will be seeking for you. You will have so many customers who will have no room to take them. And you will have so many students in that school, you will have to expand the school. Something is happening to somebody over there. That's right. The evil hand laid upon your head and your womb is catching fire. Get yourself ready now. Stretch that right hand again. Father, your word says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they lay their hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. Everywhere this hand lands now, 
let agent of infirmity disappear in the name of Jesus. Let them disappear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you have any infirmity in any part of your body, don't feel sorry for that place. The place too is not feeling sorry for you. Smite it, and the enemy will flee. The Bible said, "The singers shall be afraid." You shall run out of their close places. Get yourself ready now. You are going to do this seven times. When you smite it once, you will say, Go! In the name of Jesus. The command, Go! Must be aggressive. Are you ready now? You have any infirmity in your body? You smite it and say, Go! In the name of Jesus. One! Check your body now. Check it very well. Something is happening already. You need to do it again. You need to do it again. You need to do it again. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Check your body again. Check it very, very well. A lot of infirmities have disappeared back to the ascenders. Once you check your body and you find that your infirmity has gone, run very quickly to the altar here. Don't let the devil put the problems back. Check the hand, check the back, check the breast, check the womb. Run quickly to the altar. Don't let the devil put it back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have a prayer to pray for somebody. I don't know who the person is. But right there where you are, as I pray this prayer, the power of God will touch you. Father, I'm praying for this person that the enemy has been scattering his breakthrough. Makapota le karibos. You the scattering power that has been affecting this person. Release this person now in the name of Jesus. Be released. Be released. Be released. In the name of Jesus. Silence. Father, every hand of unrepentant household wickedness upon any life gathered here this morning. Let that evil and catch fire. In the name of Jesus. The people I want at the altar are those who have been healed. Those are the people I want at the altar, please. Father, anyone here that any time a good thing is coming your way, your expectation is always cut off. Masteka Pola Karida Sanda. The power cutting off your expectation, I cut them off now. In the name of Jesus, let your Emma run like thunder.
You that sits over there, you shall defy the law of menopause. And what they say is not possible for you shall be made possible by the power of God. The power of God is touching somebody's legs. One leg seems to be shorter than the other. You can hear a cracking in that leg. Now, something has happened to your legs. Something has happened to that leg. Stretch that leg. That's right. And begin to use it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, with a loud voice. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours at this prayer. This is a prayer vomited by the Holy Ghost. And you should not negotiate at all as you pray. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? Powers! Assign to trouble my star! Can I hear you roaring like thunder? Your voice is not loud, you know. What are you waiting for? Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Continue sign it. Thank you, Jesus. For Kapota Satalika. Ribosta Panda Kayabo Shente Raboko Setendia. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Every blood that has been withdrawn by witchcraft powers, every blood that has been sucked by eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood, as I count seven now, flow back into where you were stolen from. In the name of Jesus. One. Two. Your blood is coming back. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I cover all the testimonies here, all the miracles here, with the blood of Jesus. Affliction will never arise again in your life in the name of Jesus. Your testimony shall be great. Your testimony shall be great. Your testimony shall be permanent. In Jesus' name. You may go back to your seat. But those of you who have been interviewed, when the time comes, find a way quickly to this altar. We shall call you when the time comes for you to testify. There is power, power, one that walk in power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, one that walk in power in the prayer. Just blood of the Lamb. There is power there. In the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. One that walk in power. In the precious blood. Of the Lamb. You will now 
call on the God of Elijah, the louder you call him, the better. The louder your voice, the better. Don't let anybody's voice overshadow your voice. Say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise by fire. Pursue my pursuers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. A sevenfold man. Just have a say, God bless you. Before I go on, how many people have brought sand from their compound here today? Okay, good. The purpose of this message is to explain certain things to you. Very soon, we'll get to that section. Praise the Lord. In Second Kings chapter 2, Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 19 The problem of environmental bondage The problem of environmental bondage What did I say? It's good for you to listen carefully Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 19 if you are there, say yes. If you are not there, we shall wait for you. The problem of environmental bondage. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee. The situation of this city is pleasant. That is, the city looks very nice on the face. At face value, looks very good. The situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord said. But the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth into the spring of the waters, went to the foundation. And cast the salt in there. And said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day. According to the saying of Elisha which he spoke. Many, many, many years ago. This was before the inception even of the mountain of fire and miracles ministry. A ministry sent five pastors to a particular location in this country. That same location. Two of the pastors that they sent there, they took two additional wives. One of them took one additional wife. Another one impregnated one single lady and one widow. And the fifth one 
which is very tragic, actually became a native doctor. Five pastors sent to a particular location and they, they, they were systematically wasted. I'm praying for somebody here. Any power that wants to waste your destiny shall be wasted by the power of God. A shovel for the man. What kind of land is this? Where prophets become parrots. Teachers became traitors. Pastors became past tense. Evangelists became emergencies. Champions became prisoners. And egos became chicken. What kind of land is this? Is it that these pastors were not well trained? In fact, they were better trained than most of the pastors on the streets now. Is it that they lack the baptism of the Holy Ghost? No, they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is it that uh, they don't understand the Bible? Is it that they don't know homiletics? They don't know soteriology? They don't know amateology? They don't know angelology? They don't know pneumatology? They don't know church history? But they don't know pastoral theology? They knew all these things. They learned them at the Bible college. No, that was not the problem. The problem was that they lacked insight into the spiritual terrain. And so they became victims of the swallowers in the land. They became victims of the swallowers in the land. There are lands that swallow their people. There are lands that waste their people. These pastors lack the insight. I am praying with violence for somebody here. If your place of birth and your dwelling place has already swallowed you, be vomited now. In the name of Jesus. Be vomited now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let the amen roll like thunder. I'm praying for somebody here with violence and anger. And if the lions in your environment has already swallowed you, if the lions from your place of birth has already swallowed you, in the name which is above all names, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, be vomited now. In the name of Jesus, be vomited, 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 be vomited. In the name of Jesus. Listen, beloved. Every casualty in the land of bondage certainly have their own blame in the matter. The principalities over the territory may have exploited, untested, and undetected weaknesses in them. Or, they may possess a ladder in their foundation, making them vulnerable to these attacks. The historical root and the spiritual root of the town held the mystery. Why champions were champions as long as they were outside the territory. But immediately they step into that territory, they become wasted. But the truth again is this. Not all champions were devoured by that land. There were some that understood the terrain and they survived the place. What I'm telling you this morning is this. There are devouring lands. May the land not devour you. There are tormenting lands. There are miscarriage lands. There are dispossessing lands. There are killer lands. There are limiting lands. 
There are shrinking lands. There are demoting lands. There are sacrificing lands. There are polluting lands. There are lions' lands. There are wolves' lands. There are serpents' lands. There are crocodile lands. There are backsliding lands. All kinds of lands. Listen to me carefully. Many have used their destinies to prepare deliciously enticing food. Many have worked hard to use their brain, their certificates to prepare deliciously enticing food. Many have educated themselves, they have rebranded their brain to prepare deliciously enticing food. But the environment they wear or they are is like serving food in a plate containing maggots and excreta. They are like rubbles, golden rubbles, but in the dungeon. Listen, beloved. It's not only human beings that can be sick. But the land also can be defiled and the land can be made sick. If the land under which you dwell is sick, or under which you dwell is made sick, then there is going to be serious trouble. No matter how prosperous you are, no matter the potentials in your hand. There are so many cities in Nigeria, the children from those cities only prosper if they get out of that city. I am praying for somebody here. Every witchcraft coven in your place of birth that are discussing your issues before you leave this place today, the coven shall catch fire. In the name of Jesus, let your amen roar like thunder. Not only human beings can be sick, the land can also be sick. Leviticus chapter 18. Verse 27. The Lord has a lot of mysterious works to do here today. And it's a dangerous place to fall asleep. Leviticus 18.27 For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you. And the land is defiled. So a land can be defiled. In Second Chronicles chapter 7 Verse 14. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. It says this. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. A land upon which a man dwell can be sick. That was what Elisha confronted. The great apostle Joseph Abalola many times tackled serpents of powers occupying lands and enslaving people. The man had been given a forest to build a church before. And when the great apostle got there, and they began to pray at the edge of the forest. Those who were there, they had the feet of people running. People were running. But nobody could see who was running. If a man came from that kind of place, where there are invisible forces in the land of your bath, invisible forces upon where you built your house, invisible forces troubling you on your streets, they will make life very, very difficult. Or why did God give Jeremiah this instruction? Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 2. A land could have trouble. And the trouble will affect the human beings dwelling on top of it. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 2. Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. Other places, yes. So, but in this place, don't try to. Why? Verse 3. 
But that said the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land, they shall die of grievous death. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. Those who were born in that place. So he asked him, don't marry here. If you marry here and you have sons and daughters here, the land will waste them. I'm praying for somebody again. Uh, any wasting agenda assigned against your life from any land, I paralyze them now in the name of Jesus. That amen is not loud enough. So what are we saying here this morning? Some people's problem is not where they were born. It's not by whom they were born. It's not from where they have come. But their physical location. Where they are living or where they have lived at a given time. Those who moved into and lived in Jericho, they suffer the consequences of a cursed habitation. They suffer the consequence of a habitation in bondage. As a matter of fact, before Elisha poured salt into the foundation of that city, women and animals miscarried in Jericho because of environmental bondage. Nothing to do with personal curses. Nothing to do with the sins of their fathers. But trouble with their present accommodation or location. Those people in Jericho whose businesses crumbled was due to the location. Those who live in Jericho who suffered great hazard was because of their location. Those who live in Jericho and they suffer from frequent miscarriages was because of that location. Those who live in Jericho they suffered not because they were possessed or a witch is running after them, but the problem has its origin in their location. Curses on the foundation of houses because of the occultic involvement of the owners of the, or the builders can be the source of real problems. I have seen believers who remained in poverty until they left a particular house. I have seen somebody whose businesses never prospered until he left that particular location. I've seen a sister who kept me scaring in a particular place until she moved to another location. So when there is a problem of environmental bondage, there are only two solutions. Either seek prophetic solution like Elisha did, or you move away. Most people cannot move away. Some, they even build the house with their money. Either seek prophetic solution. This is why you have brought sand here. We shall now program words upon that sand. And the sand will carry the words. Then you take it back to that environment and pour it back there. When you pour it back there, the sand you have spoken to from here will now exercise dominion for you wherever you put it. This is what I'm saying. Some sins and attaching judgments are better avoided sometimes by relocation, not prayers. There are some that are like that. And I need to explain that to you very well. Suppose you went for a birthday party in Sodom and Gomorrah. The day fire and brimstone was falling there. You will not be spared simply because you are a visitor. You will not be spared simply because you are carrying a Nigerian passport or a Ghanaian passport. Although you are not a Sodomite, neither do you live in Gomorrah, neither are you a sinner. But the person will have perished for being in Sodom on the day Sodom was being bombed. Supposing you were visiting a friend with your family in Egypt, the night that angel was passing through and dealing with the firstborns. That visitor will not be spared once the place is unmarked by the blood of the land. So some hazards come on people, not because of the sins they commit, because of wrong location. Environmental bondages. They can cause untimely death. They can cause collective captivity. They can cause collective bondage. They can fuel foundational witchcraft. 
They can cause favor famine. They can cause acidic lack. They can yield a demoting pattern. They can give rise to unreasonable sexual perversion. They can give rise to turbulent marriages. They can give rise to disaster after big projects. They can drag people back to zero level. They can energize destructive habits. Bad health. They can energize disgrace. They can cause strange accidents. Kidnapping. Polygamy. Inordinate attraction to money. Uncontrollable prostitutions. All because of the location where the person is. I am praying once again for somebody here today. That you shall trample upon the serpent of environmental bondage. <laughs> One major problem of the church today is ignorance. The level of ignorance about spiritual warfare is terrible. And there are many revelations the enemy does not want believers to get access to. Look at Ecclesiastes. We are about to pray now. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20. Ecclesiastes 3.20 All go unto one place. All are of the dust. And all turn to dust again. There is a mystery with the sand. In the same Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis 2.7 Genesis 2.7 And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. And breathed unto his nostril the breath of life. A man became a living soul. God was the first person to put the sand into creative use. Death is a departure of the spirit and a return to the dust or the sand. This explains the dust to dust, ashes to ashes that they say are the burials. It was there in Genesis. You see the beginning and forming of agriculture. It says. Thou shalt not eat of it, cause is the ground for thy sake, is sorrow shall not eat of it all the days of thy life. Now in Exodus chapter 8, verse 16. Exodus 8, 16. So let me point this out to you so that you know what you are doing. Exodus chapter 8, verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land. That it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in man and in beast. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Read it on there. It got to a level where God asked Moses to pick up the sand and use it as a weapon to fight. This is a weapon which we must use very, very well. The earth is a place of destiny barrier. The enemy can use the same sand to cause backwardness, conversion, stroke, paralysis, all kinds of infirmity. This sand, the enemy can use it to bring insanity, to initiate skin diseases, and to cause trouble. But when you are high, grab the same sand and program what's into it today, and we'll take it back. You will see what will begin to happen. Today, you need to surrender your life to that Jesus who is going to energize your words and program words into the sand for you. After surrendering your life to Jesus, that makes you a friend of God. It is there you are qualified to fight. There are some prayers we are going to pray now having to do with this sand. But the first thing, become a friend of God by surrendering your life to Jesus. And then pray the prayers with violence. Rise up on your feet, beloved. Everybody, rise up on your feet. But you see, if you are here this morning, and you are not born again, but you would like to partake in this blessing, don't hesitate. From wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, find a way quickly to the altar to surrender your life to Jesus, so that you too can be a partaker of this blessing. This is a great opportunity you must not miss. Find a way to the altar very quickly so that you can surrender your life to Jesus. You too can fight this battle and win. Thank you, Jesus.
Just appear at the altar. I congratulate you. Just bow down your heads and see what I'm going to say after. Me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Like Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here who have taken this most important decision in life by surrendering their life to Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will lay your hands upon them. Upon them by your mighty power. Today that they have surrendered their life to Jesus, let their lives no longer remain the same. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The rest of us, let's bow down our heads and tell the Lord to forgive you of any sin that will make the land to continue to swallow your destiny or that will make the land to continue to steal from you. Ask the Lord to forgive you now. Jesus is here. His power is in this place. The God who led his people through the parted sea and from Egyptian bondage set his children free, who rained down bread from heaven all the pilgrim way, is the God to whom I pray just the same today, just the same today as when he led his people through the sea. His trustful child will be, though in his word I see. The God who do us wonders is just the same today. The God who rescued Daniel from the lion's den and from the fairy furnace set the three young men who Speaks and constellations will his voice obey. He is the God to whom I pray. Just the same today, just the same today as when he led his people through the His trustful child will be, for in his word I see, the God who doeth wonders is just the same today. The God who stills the tempest with the word divine and on the clouds of sorrow makes his rainbows shine who from the tomb of Jesus rolls the stone away is the God to whom I pray just the same today, just the same today, as when he led his people through the sea, his trustful child will be, for in his word I see, the God who doeth wonders is just the same today. The God who clothes 
the lily in its robe of snow, who in the barren desert makes its rivers flow, the God who lifts the sin up from the miry clay, is a God to whom I pray. Just the same today, just the same today, as when He led His people through the sea. His trustful child will be, for in His word I see the God who do at wonders is just the same today. Let's rise up on our feet, please. We have a few minutes to pray these prayers and pray it from your heart. Plenty of prayers to pray in a few minutes, but pray them from the bottom of your heart. This is not a day to negotiate. Many of us have been negotiating for years, and the negotiation with the enemy has not brought anything. So anyone who is afraid, may keep quiet, because the arrow of this prayer may land anywhere. Can I hear the sisters here saying this after me loud and clear? Plantation of darkness in the soil a sign against my life catch fire can I hear the sister saying that Bola can I hear you shouting the same thing when you say that once you now convert it to a machine gun prayer. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. This is the prayer one sister prayed many years ago. And all of a sudden as she prayed, she had a sound at the back of their garden. By the time she would get there, a bottle showed up from the ground. Inside that bottle was a piece of paper. Her name, the name of her husband, the name of her five children were inside the bottle right at the back of their house. Plantation of darkness in the soil a sign against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Catch fire. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Say any shrine or altar where my footprints have been taken to. Wicked people take sand from people's footprints and take it to the shrine. Any shrine or altar where my footprints have been taken to, catch fire! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray like that you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm making progress. Any agenda of the enemy to use sand to kill me. If you are in this gathering, as we're praying this prayer, and right now, 
you are feeling as if somebody is pouring sand on your body. You cannot see the sand. You cannot see the powers pouring the sand. But you can feel sand on your body. Run quickly to the altar. And be on your knees there. Any agenda of the enemy. To use sand to kill me. Backfire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. Jesus. Makate setende ya boshende raba. In Jesus name we pray. Any satanic information given to the ground against me. Can I hear you shouting this one louder? In the name of Jesus, any satanic information given to the ground against me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to believe that you are praying. Don't keep quiet and let your voice be loud. Say, voices from the grave. Calling my name. Shut up! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Silence evil voices. In Jesus' name we pray. Every evil power invokes from the ground to monitor my life. Damn! In the name of Jesus. Deal with that power now. Somebody ought to shout this loud. In Jesus' name we pray. Serpents from the sand. I yard against my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. In Jesus, then we pray. Sicknesses from the ground sponsored against my life. Damn! In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. 
thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at this altar, begin to shake your head. Shake it vigorously. As you shake it, the sand of death fall upon your body. You shall begin to go back to the senders. Do it aggressively. That's it. Today is your day of deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Let the evil stand. Go back to the senders. Go back to the senders. Go back. Go back to the senders. Go back to the senders. Go back to the senders. Father, I'm praying for this, your children. I the altar air. Every power falling stand upon your body. I command them to receive their arrows back. Sevenfold. In the name of Jesus. Any power that wants you to die shall die in your place in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Say, I cover myself. Those of you are the altar, say, I cover myself with the covenant blood of Jesus. Say that three times. Now say, I wash my body with the covenant blood of Jesus. Shout it three times. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. The arrows have gone back to the senders. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Say, you gods of the land, hear the word of the Lord. Lose your power over my destiny. Can I hear you say that? You gods of the land, hear the word of the Lord. Lose your power over my destiny. Can you say it again? Shout it again, you gods of the land. Hear the word of the Lord. Lose your power over my destiny. Shout it again. Open your mouth and begin to pray that one loud and clear. Command them to lose their power over your destiny. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let your amen be dynamic as I pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus. That amen is not loud enough. Father, in the name of Jesus. All your children who are gathered here today, any power that has used the sand, every power that has used the grave, any power that has used anything buried in the ground against anyone here, I command the power to scatter now. In the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance now. From the power of the ground. In the name of Jesus. A seven for the man.
now you will shout this loud and clear. It's a garment of sorrow. Garment of infirmity. Catch fire! In the name of Jesus. Say the garments are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, I'm praying right now for all those who are here today and the enemy has used the weapon that we discussed today against you. I decree deliverance upon you now. I bind and cast out of the head of the body every spirit of paralysis every spirit of stroke every spirit of cancer every spirit of frustration every spirit of confusion every spirit of headaches Every spirit of nightmares. I command the head to be healed in the name of Jesus. Check your body now. Check your body now. To find that the power of God has touched you. Find the way quickly to the altar. And if you have been to the altar before and they have interviewed you, run quickly to the altar too. Don't let the devil put the problem back. You, the spirit of frustration. You the spirit of stress. You the inherited migraine. You the inherited trouble in the neck and in the kidney. Lose your hold now in the name of Jesus. Every arrow fired into the eyes. Every arrow fired into the chest. Every arrow fired into the womb. Every arrow fired into any organ of the body. Let the arrows go back to the senders now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh-huh. So you gods of the land Any servant you have brought into my life I send them back You gods of the land Whatsoever servants you have sent into my life I send them back In the name of Jesus Open your mouth and begin to send them back. Send them back. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, The Lord ordained a terrifying noise against the enemy. And as they heard the noise, they began to flee. You will shout this loud and clear. As I clap my hands now, Every stranger in my environment, flee in the name of Jesus. 
Open your mouth and begin to pray. Aha, 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 aha. They must sleep. As I climb my hands now, strangers in my environment, they shall flee. 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 In Jesus, they will pray. Father, we cover the miracles with the blood of Jesus. Let your hand be upon your people for good. In Jesus' name we pray. We go back to your seat now. But if you have a testimony to share, join them by the right hand side. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Bring out your prayer letters now. If you have a prayer letter here, I'm pointing towards this altar. Rise up and point your prayer request to this altar. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every prayer request written here. Let them become testimonies in the name of Jesus. The God that answered by fire shall answer all your prayers by fire in the name of Jesus. The God that read the letter of Ezekiah shall read your letter for massive breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And by the time you come for the next palm of changing, everything you have written in this paper shall become mighty testimonies. In the name of Jesus. It's a sevenfold man. Bring out the sun now and put it to your right hand and remain standing. And you are going to say what I'm going to say after me. Upon that sun. When you are ready, say yes. If you did not know about this, and so you did not bring a son from your environment, bring yours to the next palm of changes. Say, O oh, son, hear the word of the Lord. O oh, son, hear the word of the Lord. O oh, son, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. You stand. Hear the word of the Lord now. The power of God is coming upon you now. The fire of God comes upon you now. The glory of God comes upon you now. Let every particle of this sand become the blood of Jesus. Let every particle of this sand become the fire of God. When this sand goes back to my environment, it shall turn against every part that troubles my life. By this sand, any libation poured against me shall be fire. Shall be fire. By this sand, I barricade my environment with the edge of fire, with the envelope of fire, with the angels of the living God. By this sand, any charm buried against me any charm buried against me shall backfire sevenfold in the name of Jesus. By this sound, I decree any arrow planted in the ground, planted in the grave to harm me shall backfire in the name of Jesus. By this sound, every pharaoh Every Goliath, every Uzziah, every Herod, as signed against my destiny, shall perish in the name of Jesus. You stand, carry the power of God. 
You stand. Carry the fire of God. You stand. Carry the anointing of God. You stand. Hear the word of the Lord. Every word I've spoken to you now. I fasten it to the heavens. You stand. Work against kidnapping. Work against ritual killing. Work against any kind of sacrifice. That the enemy may have stand against my life. In the name of Jesus. By this stand. Any strange element. That comes into my place of dwelling. Shall be swallowed by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. It's a the Father, it is written that your children shall to the hills raise up their head. From there comes their help. The help comes from the Lord who made them and earth. Not suffer their feet to be moved. For if they keep it, they will not slumber. They keep it, they shall end up slumbering and sleep. The Lord shall keep your going and your coming out. The Lord shall keep you in all your ways. No evil shall be for you. Neither shall any plague come near your camp. As you pour this sand into your environment. Every environmental bondage is broken. In the name of Jesus. As you pour this sand into your company. I decree upon your life. That there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. Rather you go from strength to strength. I go from glory to glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Immediately you get to your compound. Before you enter the house, pour the sand back into the compound. And see the firepower of God at work.